Hello there, and thank you for tuning in to see what the world looks like through atheist eyes. I'm Frank Zindler from American Atheist Press, and I am your host for a wide variety of programs that I've produced for American Atheist Television. The last program was uh, featured an interview with the atheist, evangelist, and satirist Brother Sam Singleton, atheist evangelist. He agreed to do two short interviews with me, and so today I'm happy to bring the second of those two interviews to you for your enjoyment. In today's program, we're going to be talking about the books and CDs and DVDs that he has authored. I think you'll really be interested in, in these programs. Let's see what we've got. Welcome back to the second interview with Brother Sam Singleton, Atheist Evangelist. Brother Sam, welcome to my show again. My pleasure, Brother Frank. Well, um, you know, I couldn't find my nude costume. We were supposed to, I was supposed to do this in the nude, but I couldn't find a nude costume in my costume closet. So it's the same old sailboat shirt. But anyway, thank you for joining us now so that we can share with all of our viewers the wonderful products and, well, compositions, creations that you have made in your career as a humorist and satirist. Uh, for the cause of free thought and, let's say, just sanity. Why don't we call it sanity? Okay. Okay. You, you, you're fine with that? I'm fine. Okay, good. Um, one of the first that I'd like to discuss is Sam Singleton, Atheist Evangelist, Cats, Sheep, and Goats. Now, I... The taxonomy. The taxonomy of atheists, believers, and preachers. Excuse me, I, I left out the subtitle. The taxonomy. Now, that's a wonderful word. As a biologist, I used to use that word all the time, but I haven't seen taxonomy in a long time. Um, why is taxonomy in this? That's a, it's mainly a scientific treatise. Uh, this was my PhD dissertation I for see. MIT. I see. Uh -huh. Not really. It's just a nope. silly subtitle. It no. was Harvard, not MIT. Yeah, it was. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah it's um, uh, it does it does examine the uh, the the sort of uh, relationship, hierarchical and otherwise, between atheist believers and preachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now how can people get this? Uh, is this available on your website, or is it on Amazon, or how do we get this? Uh, that, I think, right now you have to go to a Sam Singleton show to uh, Oh, purchase. okay, okay. So we can't put anything on the screen? As you to... can't. Okay. Uh, we, I expect, will be uh, reopening the uh, Sam Singleton online store. Okay. Brother Sam's Club. Brother Sam's Club. I love it. I love uh, it. But uh, <clears throat> uh, very shortly, but we have been uh, uh, sort of uh, reconfiguring our our, I see. Uh, our internet presence, and that's part okay. of it. Okay. So temporarily, right. at least, all, okay. you have to go to a show to get these. All right. To get these uh, bits. To get all of them. Or, to get or, any of them. To right. get any of them. Okay. Well, that's a disappointment. But anyway, it'll be behoove you all to be watching. Oh, you can, uh, you, you could uh, visit samsingleton.com and, uh, okay. and well, or... I have that showing on the screen so you can get And or you, you could, uh, you could uh, email samsingleton at samsingleton.com. Okay. okay. And we can hook you up. If you all need right. it, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll get one. Too. All right, that's good. I was very disappointed. Uh, I could tell. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it was crushed. So, all right. Now, this one, we have both a DVD and a CD. Yeah, the DVD, that, this uh, DVD here, which, uh, again, you can, you can uh, get through samsingleton.com, uh, was actually filmed live at uh, Wichita State University in Kansas. Wow. Uh, back in uh, whatever year it was that the rapture was supposed to happen. Ah, oh, yeah. And uh, what was well, the guy's name? Quite a few Champion. Years. Was the guy's name Champion? Champion, something like that. Anyway, uh, there was a Rapture Day uh, atheist uh, conference or uh, show at, at that university back then, and and this is a, a film of that 
performance. Okay, uh, patriarchs, and patriarchs and penises. It has lots of patriarchs and even more penises. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to understand the theological significance of... Uh, Turns out penises are the sort of, of conceptual through line for the entire Bible. Uh, hmm. Uh, most every major person, a male character in the Bible, somehow engages penises meaningfully. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, I know, of course, even our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was circumcised. His penis was circumcised. Well, and, you know, uh, 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 the, the, the Catholic Church had to, uh, ha had to issue an edict uh, back in the late 20th century disavowing the fact that I first thought eight, when I was going to a Catholic university one of my nuns uh, taught me that eight different Catholic churches in Europe claim to have Jesus I thought four it skin. was only seven but yeah but the uh, the uh, official uh, uh, da uh, declaration from the Vatican named 18 Catholic oh, churches wow. in Europe that had his claimed, four skin all claim to have had uh, Jesus's tiny little shriveled up 2,000 year old, eight day old uh, penis or foreskin there. Well, this raises a problem for me as a molecular geneticist and uh, biologist because I was hoping I could clone Jesus from, you know, the foreskin. You know, the amazing thing to me. But I won't know which one is the authentic one. And uh, you won't know until you grow the full-size Jesus. Yeah. And if he walks on water, you got the right one. If he sinks like a stone, you got to clone another hunk of foreskin. Uh, but, uh, you know, the amazing thing to me, you might even say miraculous, nay divine, yeah. is that uh, whoever was standing around that uh, stable that night said, you know, we're going to want to hang on to that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's know. one that night. It was eight days later, but eight yeah, it was days on later, January first. He was just an anonymous. Kid. It was eight it's days a, later on January first. Yeah, that he, he's just another uh, eight eight day old uh, first century kid. Yeah, and uh, you know, God damn it. But that foreskin was marked for glory right oh, then. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. somebody slipped that into their pocket. Yeah, I'm sure, that, and, and, and really treasured it from then after and well, preserved yeah. it. Yeah. But, you know, if you'll steal that, you'll steal anything. Don't yeah. leave your keys in your car around that guy. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, by the way, in, for our viewers who are not Catholics, they don't know this, that uh, January 1st, the memorial date of the circumcision, uh, is called the Feast of the Circumcision, yeah. January 1st. Yeah, the bris, the, you know, the, yeah. the the ceremony is called a bris, and it's performed by a guy named Moyle. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I'm not going to go into the specifics because it's a little creepy. But uh, I mean, apart from the stone knife? Well, you know, this. think about this. Circumcision during the Bronze Age. Yeah. You know, there was a lot that they hadn't learned about cutlery yeah, at that But they point. weren't even allowed to use bronze for that, even to this day. No, you had to use a stone. The, the Bible clearly a, says, a uh, you got to chunk that penis with a rock. It's, yeah. It, 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 it won't take otherwise. No, 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 no. And uh, that just hurts like hell. You know, because I chunked my penis. I wasn't going to say this, but I chunked my penis with a rock a couple of times mm. by accident. Oh. And, uh, oh, it'll bring tears to your eyes. My goodness, that's interesting activities that you must have been performing. Well, I, I was making, uh, I was, what, I, I was making arrowheads is what I was doing. Okay, now all is clear, I see. Well, I'm glad we clarified that. <laughs> Hurt like hell. I, I couldn't uh, walk for 18 months. You were oh, well, that's great. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad you recovered anyhow, so. Okay. I can show you. No, um, There's I don't know that we, that we really fully covered all of the theological significance of... Well, the main thing you need to know about patriarchs and penises is that uh, it's in two acts. Uh, the uh, audio book comes on two discs, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Act 1 has to do with Brother Sam's personal testimony ah. about how Brother Sam came from being a wild-eyed, snake-handling, slobbering, lunatic holy roller 
to be in the squared away guide he is today. And uh, Act Two is uh, concerned with the role of penises throughout the Bible. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, okay. Yeah, they. You know, it, you, you, so it's it's re, if you if 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 you're really interested in penises, listen to Act Two first. Okay. Okay. So penisologists or would be penisologists out there start with Act Two. Is that the unnatural Act Two or just Act Two? I don't believe in a natural act. I think if you can do it, it's a natural act. If axe. it's anatomically possible, it's natural. Okay. Has been in my experience. That's your experience. Okay. Um, and then the third one, which is available in a, as a book also, um, if I really like this one. If the ocean was whiskey and God was a duck. You remember that Tex Ritter song, <laughs> uh, Rye Whiskey? Uh, oh, if, yeah. If, yeah. If the ocean was whiskey and I was a duck. I dive to the bottom and drink my way up. And uh, uh, that, I, I listened to that song constantly as a child. And um, somewhere it became If God Was a Duck. And uh, I just like ducks. So, uh, you know, we're I, so it, different. It was a, it was a, it was, it was a yeah, nice thing to do. For we're, we're so different. When I was a kid, when you were listening to that, I was listening to the Met Opera broadcast. But... Um, <clears throat> No, Tex used to be with the Met. <laughs> he he was a uh, he didn't know this, but he was one of the first cowboy sopranos. Is that a fact? He was. He wasn't a countertenor. No, he was a cowboy he, soprano. He was a he, cowboy uh, soprano. You know, well, you know, Tex Ritter's. Uh, well, I, I don't want to get too anatomical, but huh? it, yeah, he. Oh, go ahead. I mean, you know, his testicles it. never descended. Is what happened. Ah, so his voice never changed. That'll do it. I mean, that you were not you were do saying. It, yeah. But anyway, I don't want to. Yeah. Do this. Okay. This well, is taking a turn. I, okay. If the ocean this, was whiskey and God this. was a duck, so we understand the title now. Um, I'll tell you this: what, this uh, ocean was whiskey and God was a. If the ocean was whiskey and God was a duck, uh, actually is set during the. Uh, uh, the summer of my ninth year, uh, in the week or so leading up to my tenth birthday, mm -hmm. uh, at, at which time I was uh, uh, screwed into preaching at my uh, at a brush arbor meeting in the oh, Ozarks. Yeah, brush arbors. Yes. And I, I, I was explain I was, what a brush arbor is. Uh, imagine if. Uh, Jed Clampett built a carport <laughs> and decided to hold church in it. That would be a, that would be a, a brush arbor. Um, in this case, uh, my, my father and my, my uh, three uncles, all of whom are named John Singleton, by the way. Uh, my father was John Calvin Singleton, and his brothers were uh, John Wesley uh, John Brodus and, Jar and John Fletcher Singleton. My goodness. And uh, Palmer, my cousin Palmer's full name is John Palmer Singleton. Mm. I call him Palmer to avoid confusion. Mm -hmm. um, the only reason I'm not a John Singleton is uh, my father and Pap, my, my grandfather, were on the outs at the time I was born. And so my father uh, named me Sam just to spite my grandpa. Well, that'll uh, do it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I, was, I had to preach this Brush Arbor meeting <laughs> And I was mad, and this is the story of that, and how uh, I, I was starting to move away from belief pretty significantly. By you were how old? I, I was nine, getting nine ready years to old, turn preaching ten. Preaching at the age of nine. And the uh, um, one, one of the people who who first so, sort of steered me away from belief uh, happened to be a moonshiner named uh, Birch Blake, and uh, Birch. Uh, was a really, really horrible human being. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it is true in life that you can't always choose your influences. And notwithstanding that he was in every regard uh, no one worthy of uh, imitation, <laughs> uh, he did. He, he managed, in spite of that, to, uh, to, to sort of help me to open my eyes a bit. And uh, I, I, to this day, I feel a certain amount of, of gratitude to Birch Blake. Uh, Birch did not survive the book, by the way. If you read the book, you'll find out what happened to Birch Blake. Okay. So the, the Brush Harbor was constructed out, out in the, the wilderness? Or? It, it, it was uh, about uh, 
about eight miles out of the town of uh, Houston, Missouri, which mm -hmm. is in Texas County, Missouri, in the Ozarks of Missouri. And uh, yeah, it, it was on Birch Blake's land. And uh, Birch Blake was a moonshiner, like I say. And uh, my, my father and uncles entered into this arrangement with Birch, whereby they could hold their revival on his land ah. in exchange to... Uh, in exchange for helping him with uh, his still, ah. uh, which they thought was a big sin, but they did it anyway. This wasn't the Holy Spirit. It was, it, it, these were other spirits. It, it, right. These were other spirits, right. yes. yes. Right. So, um, okay, so what did you, you got through the Brush Arbor preaching and what happened? You know, you know, Brother Frank, this wasn't really a Brush Arbor. This was more of a trash arbor. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh. It, it, it was constructed I, from stuff uh, we we uh, we hauled home from the dump, mm. and uh, some stuff that that well they just stole. <laughs> I mean, they, they they just they swiped it and they mm. uh, they built this tabernacle unto the Lord, and uh, yeah, it, it did not end well for them. I, I, but you have to read the book. Okay, right all right. Well then. We'll we'll have them uh, write to to you uh, through your website and we'll or better yet, come out to the show. Okay, and and buy it. I don't perform this uh, particular uh, show very often, but uh, all right, it, it is. Uh, I like to think of it as uh, Shakespearean. Oh well, uh, okay, <laughs> Shakespearean. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, that takes the breath away. But um, if you um, are going to be performing in the near future, do you have any idea of where this is going to be, or roughly what part of the country, uh, so our viewers know where to watch? We're always sorting through thousands, mm -hmm. no, tens of thousands of offers. Oh, okay. Uh, there's right. talk of a, a two-week run at Madison Square Garden sometime. Uh, Dodger Stadium. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, mm hmm. Yeah. Right. If they do another Woodstock, mm. we, we may do that, but mm -hmm. uh, we don't have anything on that. Have you thought about Covent Garden in England? Um, I have it because I don't know if it'll translate. Oh, I see. Uh, you know, uh, maybe Royal Albert Hall. I just can't yeah, say. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, we don't have a single gig. Uh, schedule that I can think of, uh -huh. but uh, it's early in 2015, yeah. and we will be touring this okay, year. Okay, great, great. Now, um, I, I should just tell our viewers that uh, before we taped these interviews, we taped a wonderful new show, uh, a performance uh, with Brother Sam, and uh, could you at least tell them what the title is, or... Uh, yeah, the one that we uh, taped was An Appreciation of Appreciation, which is uh, part of Sam Singleton Atheist Evangelist Revival, which doesn't appear on audiobook uh -huh. or I DVD. See. Okay. And uh, uh, Revival is an audience participation theater piece uh, in which we collectively reenact uh, a holy roller revival uh, along the lines of I see. what Brother Sam ah, uh, okay. went to as a child. Sounds like fun. <laughs> Except uh, uh, we do it uh, without rattlesnakes and with, water without moccasins. snakes and without God. Ah, okay. And, without uh, God. And, and so it, it's a, which it, without which God? Any God. Oh, any God. It's okay. a it's an a, it's an atheist revival mm -hmm. and, and it has a sermon and the sermon is uh, an appreciation of appreciation. I see. Okay, so, uh, so that we, puts we that I think we're going to. I think we're going to release uh, an appreciation of appreciation in, in various forms. Okay, okay. Now, before we bring this second part to a conclusion, um, you've already mentioned now this new uh, revival program. Uh, do you have any other ideas of, of what you're likely to be creating uh, in the near future? Yeah, I'm working on a new show right now. Um, it also involves... Uh, uh, cousin, my cousin Palmer. Ah. Uh, w I'll be talking about uh, uh, the year immediately after the one recounted in uh, If the Ocean Was Whiskey and God Was a Duck. Revival is actually uh, uh, 
a 2011 show, I think. Oh, I so It's been I on see. the road for a number of years. Oh, I didn't realize. Okay. Um, so the, the, the shows were released uh, in order as Patriarchs and Penises, If the Ocean Was Whiskey, God Was a Duck, Revival, uh, Too Big for God, which I don't perform anymore, and Cat, Sheep, and Goats, The Taxonomy mm -hmm. of Atheists, Believers, mm -hmm. and Preachers. The new one will... Uh, will concern uh, some of the carryings on of, of young brother Sam and, and cousin Palmer and also uh, their present lives. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also doing uh, two pieces having to do with uh, Robert G. Inger's song. Oh, how nice, um, yes. I, I, do a, I do a piece <laughs> called Extract of Inger's Saul, which has a 15-minute introduction uh, that I wrote and uh, it's followed by a, a, a 35-minute compilation of 16 Ingersoll lectures oh that goodness. are woven into wow. a single uh -huh. cohesive piece. One coherent thing. Mm -hmm. And then I'm doing a, 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 I've written another Ingersoll piece called uh, uh, Sam Singleton Presents Robert G. Ingersoll's Thomas Paine with his name left out, The History of Liberty Cannot Be Written. Uh, similarly, it has a, a 10 or 15 minute introduction followed by, in this case, a 45 minute compilation of Ingersoll's uh, lectures about Thomas Paine. Uh, I came to Robert G. Ingersoll fairly late and uh, it has been uh, one of the, the joys of my career getting to know this wonderful, kind man who died in 1899. Yeah. The sad thing about Robert G. Ingersoll, Brother Frank, is that he believed, as he often said, that the United States in particular and, and the world in general were on the cusp of a new century, and he was talking about the 20th century, yes, yes, in yes. which superstition right. would shortly and inevitably yeah. be eclipsed yeah. by reason yes. and humanity. He was convinced, he was absolutely convinced that that was within reach. And uh, he, he died 115 years ago. And uh, I think, <clears throat> I'm not sure that we aren't farther uh, from that objective than we were the day he died. Yeah. What I do know is this, is that he was the most popular public yeah. orator of the last half of the, of the 19th century that he could fill any 5,000-seat hall in the United States. With paying customers. With, with people who paid big money. Yeah. And uh, that is absolutely not true of any public atheist yeah. today, yeah, certainly not, not me. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. to that extent, uh, we have demonstrably lost ground. Well, for those of you in the viewing audience who belong to various atheist or humanist or other free thought groups, I hope that when you're planning your meetings, uh, your conventions, and other get-togethers, you will be thinking about Brother Sam Singleton, atheist evangelist, to include in your programs and in your shows. His, pr his performances are absolutely fantastic, and uh, they would be, I think, the centerpiece of, of any uh, atheist or humanist or free thought uh, get-together. So thank you, Brother Sam. Thank you, Brother Frank. And I wish you all the best in your uh, tours of the country coming up this year. And um, I hope that uh, maybe next year we can do another show and we can find out what all has transpired in the interim. I will look forward to it. Okay. That's all for now. And tune in next time. We'll have something else. I don't know what it'll be. For now, I'm Frank Zindler for American Atheist Television.